Hello, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to me present my findings after analyzing your company, RxBar's social media metrics. I hope that you find what I have to say insightful and can gain useful knowledge to be able to report back to your team in order to improve your social media efforts in the future. So let's get started. Here is a little bit of background on why I chose to look at RxBar. I'm a student athlete who consumes entirely too many nutrition bars, many of them actually being Rx bars. I was introduced to the bars earlier this year by my lifting coach who would give them to us after practice in order to feel it before classes. I like the products and want to learn more about the company itself, especially when compared to other nutrition bar companies. I knew that our expert was a young startup because I'd had some professors talk about the brand in class, so I was curious to learn about their success being so new in such a competitive industry. So, because our expert is such a young startup that was founded only back in 2012 and the middle of the rise of social networking, I found it fitting to focus on our expert's social media efforts. During my research, I looked for trends and data points by comparing our expert to that of its significant competitors in the nutrition bar industry. I found that RxBar tends to lag behind its competitors in terms of key engagement metrics that are more likely to lead to conversions. This means that although RxBar does have a strong social media presence, they tend to not have as many comments or shares as competitor companies do. These are two very important metrics because they both indicate a high level of interest and engagement. As you can see here, I showed the likes, although they're good and can make companies happy and look good on paper, they don't really lead to much else other than that where comments and shares show a high level of engagement with users. So by showing those numbers, it can also lead to more revenue and more customers actually buying the products versus customers who are just liking. So although likes are good to have, it is much less meaningful to have a lot of likes compared to a lot of comments or shared shares. Number of likes or average likes per post tend to be vanity metrics. Vanity metrics, as described in the book Lean Analytics, are metrics that simply look good but do not lead to much action, meaning that although it is cool to say that our expert has more likes on its posts than its competitors, likes are often hard for companies to monetize. So although likes look impressive, there's very few people who just scroll through their feed, like posts, and then actually go and buy the product. If they're actually really interested in the post, they're going to stop, maybe share the post, comment on it, engage with it a little bit more than actually liking it. So. Here are the startup pirate metrics, a coin termed by Dave McClure. There are five elements of building a successful business or startup. Although the five elements don't always go in the same order for each customer instance, the way that I have depicted it here on the screen, going from top to bottom, depicts what maybe a typical customer per se um, would look like and for our purposes can show how social media fits into the five elements. So because in this whole presentation, I'm focusing on our RxBar social media, as I run through the five elements in the Startup Pirate Metrics, I'm going to focus on them in terms of social media and how they relate to it. So at the top is acquisition, right here, which means that a brand is at the very beginning of its journey with a user. The user has just discovered the brand or product by coming across it on their feed. Maybe they were on the Explore page on Instagram, or maybe on Facebook one of their friends shared it or commented on a post by the company and it popped up on their feed. Something along those lines, but regardless of how they came across it, the user is now aware of the existence of the brand. Next is activation, down the line here. So now that the user knows of the company, it's time, it's important for them to get the user engaged and turn them from just a drive-by viewer to an actual engaged user. This could happen maybe by getting a like or follow from the viewer um, after they come across the brand. So viewers move to the activation stage by brands having content that resonates with the user and makes them want to continue to see content from the brand and continue to engage with it as well. So then after that is retention. And this is where users don't just engage with a post once, but rather they follow the profile and continue to like, comment, and share posts regularly. Users who are as engaged as to comment or share the brand's posts are more likely to make purchases than users who merely like the post and then scroll past. Engagement of users is the key to making revenue from social media. This is why comments and shares are so important. Although likes are good, it is easy for users to scroll down their feed and like every single post of every account they follow. I know some of us are all guilty of that. But when a user is actually commenting or sharing a post, they're much more engaged with the company and more likely to move down all the way to the revenue phase. So this stage is where users decide to actually purchase the product or service. 
This is where a company actually makes money and is able to stay in business. If a company is unable to engage customers enough to have a conversion rate of users who go from acquisition phase all the way down to revenue phase, then they're doing something wrong on social media and their profiles are not being very effective. And finally, the last stage is referral. This is where users feel so passionate about, about a brand and so fond of it that they post the product or service on their page, or post about it at least. So this is a big step because this means that the brand is then getting free promotions from users. Although these startup pirate metrics are normally talked about in a much broader sense with marketing, I think that for our purposes, it is easy to see how highly engaged users who are likely to turn into revenue users, so going from acquisition down the line to revenue, should be the goal for our XBAR and any company's social media accounts as well. So the way that I've structured this is that I'm going to go through each of the three major platforms, um, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and analyze our XBAR's metrics and compare them to some of your guys' main competitors in order to sort of benchmark where you guys are in the landscape of nutrition mark companies on social media. So first up, we have Facebook. This first graph is looking at Facebook engagement for our XBAR and then competitor companies of Cliff Bar, Quest Nutrition, and Kind Bars as well. These are the same three competitors that you will see benchmarked to our X bar on mostly graphs to follow this as well, just to keep in mind. So on the first graph on the left side of the screen right here, you can see that that X axis is labeled Facebook weighted engagement total. This is looking at the equation of the number of shares given a weighting of 0.5 plus the number of comments given a weighting of 0.3 plus the number of likes giving a 0.1, this equation here at the bottom of your screen. This equation was used in order to give a more accurate view of who has the most engaged users, meaning who has the most numbers of users who are engaged enough to be sharing, commenting, and liking the post too, but giving more, but holding shares and comments at a higher standard, thus they're being multiplied by a higher integer than likes is. So when you're looking at a typical engagement rate, it counts comments, shares, and likes all as one in the same and doesn't hold any importance to one of the metrics over another, meaning that they just add up the shares, comments, and likes and count them all as engagement rather than giving them each a factor of their importance. That's why this equation is used. So you can see that the graph gives more importance to shares over comments, comments over likes. As you can see in the actual graph, Cliff Bar beats out Question Nutrition by a little over 200 engagements, as you can see the difference there. But beyond those, the two companies, both RxBar and KindBar, have minimal amounts, meaning less than 50 total engagements on Facebook using this formula. This shows that RxBar coming in last place in comparison to the competitors on this graph. They need to focus on how they can change their strategy on Facebook in order to gain more comments and shares, but even likes as well because their engagement is so low. So moving on to the graph on the right side of the screen, this graph is Facebook post engagement rate, which is the amount of shares, likes, and comments added up and then divided by the amount of posts in order to get the average post engagement rate for each company. And we talk about engagement down here, and you can see it up here as well. So this graph shows that Cliff Bar has the highest engagement rate with Quest Bar having the next best. Once again, Kind Bar and RX Bar have engagement rates of nearly zero. This overall just shows that RxBar and KindBar as well really need to work on their Facebook strategies in order to improve their engagement and try to start hanging out up here with Cliff Bar and Quest Nutrition. So now we are going to look at how RxBar is faring on Instagram. So this graph is looking at the average engagement rate per post for our XBAR and the same competitor companies. As you can see right off the bat, our XBAR performs far better on Instagram in comparison to the competitors than you guys did on Facebook. So it's interesting to see graphs of the same metrics for the same companies, but looking at various platforms because it shows how even though one company can be very dominant on one platform, it does not necessarily mean that they are going to be dominant across all social media platforms. As you can see in the comparison of Cliff Bar dominating on Facebook, but um, actually moving behind our X bar here. So this graph is also interesting to note that all the nutrition bar companies have higher engagement rates on Instagram, which is partly just due to the platform itself and the nature of um, engagement on the platform. But also, it's also it's good to note that our expert has moved up here and is hanging out with some of the more established people, so good job doing that. So this next graph is looking at Instagram can conversation rate. Note that we are looking at conversation rate 
which is the number of audience comments per post and not conversion rate. So here you can see that our X bar still lags behind Quest Nutrition in terms of amount of comments that they are getting per post, but they're still ahead of the other two brands that we are looking at. So our X bar has 280k followers on Instagram as of May 12th, but it's only averaging a little over 40 comments per post. This isn't a bad average compared to some competitors, but I feel that it's a rate that can be improved, and if it does increase, could lead to more conversions from Instagram. If users are more interested in and engaging with our experts' Instagram posts, it will not only increase the conversation rate metric, but almost will definitely lead to more customers purchasing the product after engaging with the brand on Instagram. So now let's look at the last of the three major social platforms, Twitter. So this first Twitter graph is looking at engagement rates for our X bar and the same competitor companies that we've been looking at, but now just on Twitter. So our X bar is represented by this big green bar on the side, which as you can see, it shows that you guys have the highest average engagement rate per tweet compared to the other three competitor companies down here. So it's impressive that our X bar has over two times as high of an engagement rate as Quest Nutrition, the company that has the next highest engagement rate. Obviously, if you can look at the numbers and, and even just the bars, you can see that if you stacked up two of these Quest Nutrition bars, it still will not equal this R X bar. So um, overall, this graph shows that you guys have done a great job posting content on Twitter that gets users to engage with it. However, you need to remember that engagement rates don't take into account the importance of likes versus comments versus retweets. So let's look at another graph, which actually um, takes out shares and just looks at those individually since that is the most important type of engagement. So Twitter amplification, which is the number of retweets per tweet for the same slate of companies as in all the previous graphs, this graph shows how the companies stack up in terms of shares, the highest engagement marker. I chose to use this bubble type of graph in order to show the comparison of the different metric values for each of the companies. Um, although another bar chart could have been used as in all the previous graphs I did, I thought it was interesting to show the data this way and represent it to be able to um, compare the companies against each other a little bit better. So the large circle indicates uh, the highest uh, Twitter amplification rate. So as you can see, Quest Nutrition had the highest amplification rate of 18.59 retweets per tweet on average, followed by Cliff Bar, Kind Bar, and then finally RX Bar. Um, this means that you guys Although you did have a lot of engagements in forms of comments and likes, since on this you guys did have the highest Twitter engagement, um, this graph then shows the breakdown that you're kind of lacking in the area of amplification, which means retweets. So um, amplification rate shows how many followers the content is so relevant or relatable to that they then feel so strongly as to share with their own network, which is awesome. Um, a company having a high amplification rate shows that they're able to create content the users are not merely just liking or scrolling past and maybe chuckling at, but actually relating to the content and wanting to engage with the brand and share it with their own network and furthering the reach of the company's posts. So increasing amplification on Twitter is one area that I feel that our expert could really focus on in order to see more conversions actually come out of their um, Twitter page. So finally, the last graph I'm going to take you through looks at gender preferences of various nutrition bar companies. Um, this data set came from a different site, so this one came from Statista, where all the other ones came from Rival IQ. So although this graph doesn't look at social media, it's rather just data from a large survey of users. I felt that it was important to show how saturated this industry really is and um, how important it actually is to make a lasting impression on users because they do have so many options for nutrition bars to purchase. So on this graph, you can see that both Cliff Bar and Kind Bar are two of the companies that we've been benchmarking RX Bar to throughout this analysis. And when they're compared to the field of competitors here, neither one of them are um, the, one of the top ones actually. So um, Cliff Bar is almost at the bottom of the rankings of what users, of what brands of bars users say they prefer right here. And then Kind Bar is a little bit better. They have a very high percentage of women, almost at the top um, of women who say that they prefer Kind Bar. So that's um, interesting to look at the difference between their um, 
men and women who say that they prefer Kind bar. Um, so on this graph, obviously, Nature Valley has the largest number of respondents that said that they prefer it. Um, and then Kashi Bar had the least right here. So this survey was um, from about 3,000 individuals, half who identified as male and half who identified as woman. And they just asked um, the people in the survey to indicate which brand of bars that they prefer out of these. Um, so the graph is my is actually important to my analysis and not just totally random because it shows that Kind and Cliff Bar, which are two companies that we've looked at throughout this analysis, that have had that have beat out RX Bar in terms of many metrics, are also getting beat out by other companies as well. So it just goes to show that there are a lot of companies in the tr nutrition bar industry, and RX Bar really needs to be competitive with them and look at how they can increase sales, especially from social media, and step up their game in that area. So now that we have looked at all the data, um, the conclusions I have drawn from the data are that one of the biggest issues that I saw um, from it is that our experts is trailing behind competitors in terms of high engagement factors of comments and shares on all of the social media platforms. These are the two parts of engagement out of the three that indicate a high level of interaction with the post from a user, which is more likely then going to get them to move from the retention phase of pirate metrics, if you remember that, to the revenue phase of pirate metrics where they're actually buying the product. So on the surface, on some platforms such as Instagram and Twitter, our XBAR seems to be doing very well with overall engagement, but it's important to remember to look closer at the metrics such as conversation rate, amplification rate, and other metrics that actually look at comments um, and shares, and honestly, even conversion rate if um, those numbers can be indicated. So um, finally, just remember that a high level of engagement and eventual conversion of customers from going from just a social media user to actually a purchaser of the product is so important because the nutrition bar industry is so vast. And with our XR being a modern um, company that was very tailored to millennials being their product um, packaging is just very new age and simplistic. They have a very um, good chance of doing very well on social media, especially compared to more established brands too. So it's definitely one area of focus that they could get a lot of conversions from that um, could be an area of improvement for you guys in the future. So finally, after analyzing all of the data, the recommendation that I have for you and your team of social media gurus at RX Bar is to run a new campaign across all three platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, that is solely focused on amplification. This means to create content with a sole purpose in mind of if people are going to relate to it enough, um, better than the previous content that has been created from you guys, in order to want to share it with their own followers. This is my recommendation because by creating content that goes viral or gets reshared so many times with um, your followers, 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 if you get my drift from there, um, our expert is going to have so many more users coming into the acquisition phase. And from there, um, it's your job to create the content that's going to keep them around and drive them all the way through the metrics, the startup pirate metrics that I talked about at the beginning in order to get them to the revenue phase. So to wrap things up, our expert has done a great job for such a young company establishing themselves among the big players in the nutrition bar industry. Social media is a place where our expert has the opportunity to shine and to gain lots of new customers and in turn more revenue from. But updating the focus of their social media to be on getting users to repost content, our expert is going to have um, a challenge in front of them, they're going to have to create a much more engaging profile in order to have much more engaged users and acquire more new potential customers as well. So thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. I hope that you found my insights and information insightful and can use them along the, with the rest of the RX for our social media team in order to better improve the company's social media strategy. Thanks again!